buy a scotch and soda double. What about you? I'll have a root beer. Root beer? Well, it's your liver, my friend. Night desk? About that shooting. The guy that was shot, his name is Leonard Moss. M-O-S-S. As in Sam, yeah. Hold it. Let's have another same thing. He was in a crap game. Uh, hold it. Hey, you all right? I just never saw a stiff before. No? Well, I always thought newspaper reporters... This is my first day at it. Okay, I'll call you later. Hey, he wants us to stick around a while, just in case. You all right? I'm all right. That's probably that stuff you're drinking. How about bringing that bottle with you? All right. Another thing you've got to remember about newspaper work. The public always expects a newspaper man to do a lot of drinking. And so, you mustn't ever let the public down. You think this story will make the front page? It'll be lucky to get in at all. One dice hustler shoots another dice hustler. So what? They don't seem to have the murders these days like they used to. Different class of people, I guess. What's the matter with this crate? That thing ain't worked in 10 years. I, I don't suppose there's any connection, but we haven't had a real good juicy murder story in this town since the Democrats got hold of the country. Back under the Republicans. Well, how do you like that? Huh. Ten years? That's more like 15. Ah. Mine in May, his in June, she forgot mighty soon. Remember that? Yeah. Uh -huh. There they go in their joy, happy girl, lucky boy, and here am I, broken hearted. That's what I mean. That's the song they sang for Roxy Hart. And was that a story? What was? Roxy. Customers. All right, I'll get them, I'll get them. Hello, boys. Charge your glasses, gentlemen, to Roxy Hart, the prettiest woman ever tried for murder in Cook County. OK, partner, to Roxy Hart. To Roxy Hart. Well, what about her? You remember that story? Yeah, some of it. 1926, 27, 28, the bad old days, when everything went, and everything was big. Big money, big crooks, big murders, big stories. Keep cool with Coolidge, keep cockeyed with Capone, keep Daffy with Daddy Brownie. This seems to call for a spot of music. And serve everybody around on me. What about Roxy Hart? Roxy Hart, the Teapot Dome, the 18th Amendment, the Monkey Trial, Carl Wander, Texas Guinan, Mayor Thompson, the black bottom, black bottom, Hall Mills, Judd Gray, and Ruth Snyder. I want to hear what you got to say about Roxy Hart. Why not? That was the best of them all. That was all of them rolled into one 15 years ago. And I remember it like it was yesterday. That first flash of a shooting. The police? Uh, this is Finnegan, the charge at 1442 South Melrose. Somebody just shot somebody in apartment six. And I make this statement voluntarily and of my own free will. Freely and gladly. I fired five shots into the man. Smack into him. Killing him instantly. Like a dog. Cheerful little assassin. Assassin? Is an assassination to shoot a burglar? What would you do if you came home and found somebody banging on the bedroom door? Check on the wife. But she wasn't here, I tell you. Wasn't nobody here. I come home from the pool room and... You know, I'm the best hooker player down there. Yeah. And as I... Come on, come on, sign it. He ain't trying the case. He's just a reporter. Not bad, huh? One hour and we got the guy in a signed confession. Last week, a jury thanked a man for killing a burglar. And this week, they're giving a Hupmobile. Where do you think the madam could be? The what? The wife. 
The movies, maybe. Come on, let's go outside and have a talk with the prosecutor. Say, is he trying to insinuate something? How do you look at this thing? That's my wife. She's artistic. Oh. I never see anything that reminded me less of Whistler's mother. Everybody through with this? It's all yours, Doctor. I believe that if everybody would love everybody else... Okay, that... Billy Sunday, let's go. Yeah, well, that's about all it is, I'm afraid. Routine 12B. Yeah, Joe the Jerk defends the little nest while uh, Miss Flapper Wife is out mooning over John Gilbert. Okay, Tommy, see you later. Story. I want you to tell me what really happened in here. You heard him, I was. Uh, don't give me that. You weren't skinning around the outside of this building just for your health. Come on, let's have it. You, you let me go. You plugged him, didn't you? You batty. Come on, what are you scared of? They won't do anything to you. This county never does anything to a dame. Cook County is the most gallant county in the whole country. Why, a pretty murderess is as safe here as she is in her mother's arms. What do you want me to do? Say I shot him when I didn't? Oh, no, you're not. Come in. Come in. Go. Cut it out, will you? You do that again, I'll break your arm. Uh, 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 no more billy goats, either. Oh, oh, please let me go. I didn't do it. I swear I didn't. He shot him. Yeah, but why did he shoot him? Because he busted in and caught you. Oh, he didn't have to bust in. The door was open. Oh, mercy me. Mercy me. Bring the body back in the parlor. Oh, no. Come here, Now, look, honey. You and me has got to have a nice little talk. Look, honey, sucker, you get right in there, and Daddy will be back in just a few minutes. We met this gentleman downstairs. He says he knows the step. Who are you? Uh, e. Clay Benham at your service. Uh, the, uh, Benham and Casely. Theatrical booking agents. That is, or that was my partner, the late Mr. Casely. I don't want to seem crude, but I'd like somebody to make up their mind about these remains. He wasn't no midget, remember? You positively identify this man? Uh, gladly. Uh, that is, naturally. Take it away. Just ring twice, any time. Service with a smile. Now, what do you know about this? Very little, I'm afraid. I didn't even know that Roxy was married. Roxy? Mrs. Hart. She was a client of ours, in a way of speaking, though we were never able to place her. What particular talent was she peddling? She described herself, I believe, as... As a dancer. I don't believe it. She wouldn't lie to me like that. Well, she was here washing the dishes all the time. My dear fellow, it's a matter of record. She's been on our doorstep, or rather, Mr. Cases, for weeks. Only this afternoon she insisted on another audition. And she told me she'd never seen him before. Never seen him before in her life. A complete stranger. She uh, liked Mr. Casely? Well, let us say, rather, that Mrs. Art was ambitious and female. A coquette. The word is nicely chosen. Mr. Casely was responsive to her appeal. Fred was a man who was always sensitive to a well-turned ankle. A wolf? Demortuous nil nisi bonum. Yeah, a wolf. But why? Is, is Roxy the one that plugged him? She is. Why should I try to protect her? Why should I take the rap when all the time she was lying to me? I bring her to Chicago. I get her a job. And this is what she does to me. Why, I wasn't even in the room. I was coming up them stairs when bang, 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 bang. And there she was with the rod in her hand and him folding up right there. <laughs> well, this is a little more like it. And all the time I'm trying to believe her. I'm trying to make myself believe her because I wanted to believe Where her. Where is she now? On the roof, hiding. 
Excuse me. Downstairs, cover the building. You come with me. On the heart story, a perfectly lovely situation has developed. Joe the Jerk has now pinned it on the little woman. I want to issue a statement. Oh, hold it, Tommy. You're not going to change your mind again, I hope. Why, you liar! I didn't do it! Get out of here! Hold it, Tommy. They're coming through the walls. Why? Why? It is Mrs. Hart. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy, will you, honey? You don't want to damage your defense. Nothing doing down here. All right, help the sergeant up here. I'll watch the fire escape. Okay. Keep this wire open, Tommy. Santa Claus is coming. Wait till I get my hands on that dirty double crosser. I'll give him. Will a you pipe down? Body. Here's double your lead. Me. Roxy Hart, the prettiest woman ever charged with murder in this county, has just surrendered to a representative of the Gazette. Whilst the constabulary. All you got to do is to sign this. Out, buddy, the cops are still on the roof. Do you hear what he said? What? You really think I'm so? Uh... Pretty, like you said. Honey, you are a garden of hollyhocks. How old are you, dear? Eighteen. Roxy is 23 and red-headed. Listen, old boy, let me get the girl signed up before those monkeys get back down here. All right, shake it up. Hold it, Tommy. What's that? All you got to do, my dear, is to sign this contract. What contract? This is just a blank piece of paper, not even a fine print on it. I'm going to fill that in later. Cabarets, personal appearance, everything. We'll clean up. Uh, unless, of course, you swing. What is this, the insane asylum? You're beginning to give me the creeps. You're not gonna swing. Women don't swing in this county. And will you stop saying swing? Listen, Roxy, you are a very lucky girl. Today you are nobody, and who cares? Tomorrow money couldn't buy the publicity you'll have. Column after column of it, pictures, measurements, what you eat, what you drink, how you feel when you get up in the morning. Advice to young girls. On the radio. Everybody in the country will know you. They'll fight to see you, like when you cross the sidewalk from the patrol wagon to the courtroom door. They want your autograph. They grab your clothes for souvenirs. They want to kiss you so they can tell their grandchildren. A million dollar production, and you're the star. I'm telling you, honey, you'd be right up there with Peaches Browning, William Jennings Bryan, Queen Marie, Ma Ferguson. Mutton Jeff. Red Grange, Ruth Snyder, Amy Semple McPherson. Barney Google. Don't you understand, dear? This is Chicago, the city of opportunity. And that city only awaits one word from you to be at your feet. Well, maybe I'm crazy. Listen, you female Let me cop. Out of here, please. Are you going to throw away a veritable fortune? And how am I going to spend that fortune in a cemetery? You won't have to, I tell you. Who's going to stop it? You? Billy Flynn. Billy Flynn? You mean the great mouthpiece? Get Billy Flynn and you can write your own ticket. Yes, and use it. The streets of the city are congested with women that Billy has saved from their just desserts. Well, do you think he'd take me? Honey, Willie would take an ape woman if there was enough publicity in it. Yeah. He's good looking, too, isn't he? Sex appeal rises from him like a cloud of steam. But you don't think there'd Honey, be any Honey, I keep chance. telling you, this county wouldn't hang Lucretia Borgia. I wouldn't want to get in any jam, you know. It's money from home, dear. That's the only way to describe it. And you don't think that, well, all this you said about my career, you don't think I could have it if I was innocent? Oh, oh Roxy, wow. Roxy, please. please. Will you? Well, then, of course. Naturally, I want to do everything, everything I can for my career. All right, honey. What's her name, Roxy? All right, Roxy, give it to us big now. Give it plenty of teeth. The old spider face is melody. Let's find all this. Go! Wonderful, wonderful. Now, let's see. If I'd known this in time, I'd have got her myself. Uh-huh. This'll be a nifty, though. All right, head up. That's fine. You got her in focus, boys? Get the orchard in. Ah, uh, this is wonderful, wonderful. Love it. Is that her? Yeah. Biff, huh? Wonderful, wonderful. She's just a girl. Like me. Yeah. How's that? I thought she'd be older and... More sinful looking. She's. Where's the husband? What's his name? She's yeah. beautiful. Now Jimmy listen, is... I don't want any of this to get in the newspapers. I want the whole thing kept perfectly quiet. Sure, sure. You're too smart a guy. Step right over here. Oh, no, you ain't gonna drag me into this. You're already drugged, you dope. Now stop stalling and get over there. We gotta catch the mail edition. I won't do it. There you are. No spirit of cooperation. Oh, yeah, listen, Amos, you want people to think you're a yellow dog and ran out on your wife? A low, dirty bum? What else is he? Get in there and show the world you're gonna stand by her through thick and thin. The old bulldog spirit for the woman I love. 
How about a kid? If I were a man like you were to say, a woman could fight the whole world. Lefty. Well, naturally, if I thought... Atta boy. We'll send you a copy to hang in your den with the rest of your trophies. What about the stiff? The corpse? No corpse is gonna pose with me, especially that. And you can just count me out. Get back, honey. The stiff is gone. It's enough with that. We don't need the stiff. Hey, Fido, lay down. Yeah. Play dead. Here? Yeah. You, right over here now. Try and unloosen. That's fine. Beautiful. Beautiful. Come on, everybody. Big smile. Beautiful. How's this pose? Is this a good one? The knees, babe. How about a profile? I hate to lose any part of that kisser, but let me see. Good. You're asking his forgiveness. Who's asking whose forgiveness? Look, Roxy, cooperate. The knees, the knees. I don't know what I want to get mixed up in this thing Look, for. you move out of there, and I'll bet you also help me. I'll hit you such a rough, you... Roxy, you're begging his forgiveness. Uh -huh. Husband, you're smiling sweetly. Counselor, cook official. That's it. Hold it, everybody. The, the knees, knees, Roxy, the, the knees. knees. That's the way it started. Small. But, brother, how it grew. In one week, Roxy Hart was the best-known dame in the United States. Her fame covered this whole country like the morning dew. Like the dew. The prettiest woman ever charged with murder in the history of Chicago. Pretty soft, huh? That's the way it looked, yeah. Like a setup, a pushover. No risk, no danger, no chance of a conviction. <laughs> That's the way it looked then. That's what she thought. Do you seriously think Billy Flynn is going to waste his time on every two-bit scuffle that gets into the papers? Two-bit scuffle? Eight pictures of nine columns in two days. I guess that ain't the bee's knees. My dear girl, do you realize that during my first week here, I had a total of 15 pictures, 27 and a half columns, and an editorial denouncing me? Please, you're so awful. It's all I can do to keep my mind on you. Children. Here, you talk. You think you were the queen of the jail. Well, permit me to remind you, Miss Sloppy, your whole case is a very low-class affair. Whereas my friend was in the social register. On a pass? In my opinion, Mrs. Hart, you're a very ordinary bum, and you might as well face it. Bum? I'll bum you! <laughs> Children. You girls have got to stop the squabbling. Let's see, where was I? Altogether, Mr. Benham and I managed to raise $1,400 off the furniture. Well, never mind how, just count it out. Then there's $500 from the savings and $500 from Roxy's life insurance. That's $2,400. $300 that I borrowed and $700 from the building and loan. That's $3,400. And that's all. Oh. All so far. I figured I could pay you, say, $20 a week. I could give you interest, maybe double interest. Now, just a minute, Hart. When you came to me and said, Mr. Flynn, will you take this case, did I say, is she innocent or is she guilty? No. I said nothing like that. I simply said that you got $5,000, didn't I? That's right. You've been perfectly fair with me. All right, then I expect you to be fair with me. What about her father and mother? You tried them? Well, I don't think they got much. Well, whatever they've got, they'll give to save their daughter the little baby, won't they? Well, I don't know. You don't know? My heart, that's the most cold-blooded thing I've ever heard a man say. To even question the willingness of a father and mother to come to the aid of their child. Flesh of their flesh, bone of their bone. Well, I didn't mean that Now, they... where are they? Get them on the phone right now. They live down in the country. Well, call them. It's long distance. Well, put it on the bill. Call him. Will you get me Mr. Magnus J. Wadsworth in Zanesboro? Why, the best friend that any of us can have in this world may turn against us and become our enemy. Our son, our daughter, that we have reared with loving care, may prove ungrateful. Those we have trusted with our happiness or good name may prove traitors to that faith. But when all others have fled, when riches have taken wing and reputation fallen to pieces, there still remains one absolutely unselfish friend in this selfish world, one who will never desert us. One who will never prove ungrateful nor treacherous. That's a mad dog, eh? That's right, it is. I was thinking it was... Mr. Wadsworth, uh... this is Amos. Roxy's in some terrible trouble. What? Yes. Yes. No. And if we don't do something pretty quick... Do what? 
I said they're liable to hang her. Good. They're going to hang Roxy. What did I tell you? Now, let's get this straight, Tootsie. I haven't committed myself on this proposition yet. Maybe I'll be able to handle it, and maybe not. It all depends on developments. But I'm going to give you a few tips now, just in case. Well, <clears throat> maybe I shouldn't say this, but I didn't do it. You didn't do it? Oh, well, then I'm not sure that I'm the man for the job. Now, if well, you're please, guilty... Please, please, I'm sorry I mentioned it. Oh, that's all right. I'll keep it in mind in case of emergency. But for the present, we'll proceed along the customary lines. Now, uh, what we got to do first is to go out for sympathy through the newspapers. The story of your life starts tomorrow in the Herald, from kindergarten to jail. What? My secretary is writing it this afternoon, signed with your name, of course. An authoress. Beautiful southern home, every luxury and refinement, magnolias, colored mammy, the full treatment. Educated in private schools, sheltered like a little flower, and then ruined. Parents dead, fortune swept away, a runaway marriage, and heartbreak. You're a lovely, innocent child, bewildered by what has happened. Young, full of life, and lonely. Caught in a mad world of a great city. <laughs> Music, life, wine. The black bottom. Like a moth to the flame. And now the cold gray dawn. Mad world ceased. Butterfly crushed on the wheel. And what's left? Regret. That's the important thing. Regret. You'd give your life this very minute to bring him back. Well, why'd I do it? Was I drunk or crazy? All you can remember is a fearful quarrel, and then he threatened you. My honor? No, no, we don't want to fall back on that unless we have to. He threatened to kill you. Later we'll work out why. You can see him coming toward you now with an awful look in his eyes. A wild look. And get this. You're both grabbed for the gun, see? Self-defense. Whatever we work in later, that's there from the start. And everything went purple. Purple? Black? White? Red? Purple's good, it's new. As you both grabbed for the gun, everything went purple. I like that. The reporter's downstairs, dear. Okay, okay. Holy Moses, haven't you got something else you can wear? Well, what's wrong with this? Well, for a clip joint, it's great. But you gotta remember what I said, you dope. Regret, remorse, unhappiness. No matter what happens, there can never be any more life, gaiety, or happiness for you. You'll never smile again, you understand? I got it. Well, don't forget it, bird brain. Miss Martin. Give me that black dress, the one with the sunflower on the stomach. How is she today? Poor child. She's holding up magnificently, poor bewildered kid. Right now, she can hardly realize what's happened. Mr. Callahan, I've just seen Finnegan, the janitor. What janitor? At the apartment house. And from what he says, she didn't do it. Shh, 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 are you... Are you nuts? What are you trying to do, kill the story? Listen, you are supposed to be a newspaper man, not a detective, you understand? You are supposed to build up a story, not tear it down. Give me that. Never scare me like that again. Gentlemen, Mrs. Hart. Roxy, dear, this is Mary Sunshine, the famous feature writer. And these are some gentlemen of the press. How are you, Mrs. Hart? So glad to meet How you. How do you do? Boy. Oh, you poor child. Come sit over here. We all understand. I'm going to leave you now, Roxy, so that Miss Sunshine and the boys can interview you without being disturbed. Just answer their questions frankly, and don't forget what I told you. Yes, Daddy. Just a frightened kid, that's all. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Jake. Bye, Willie. Excuse me. Yes, yes, of course. What's that? A dinner from the Ritz, madame. With two more outside, but just from restaurants. No other hotel. Listen to this. 
My heart and hand are at your feet. With you, my life would be complete. Yours with pleasure, an unknown admirer. Isn't that lovely? Probably from Lord Byron. Then why doesn't he sign it? But Mr. Flynn... Now, wait a minute. You get the dough and I'll get you a pass and not before. But what kind of a jail is it that everybody in the world can get into the wife but the husband? Everybody's been so lovely. You know, I haven't had to eat this jail soft once. Uh, just what did happen, Mrs. Hart? I was at... Uh, tell us in your own words, why? Well, all I can remember is a dreadful quarrel and then a threat. I can see him coming toward me now with that awful look in his eye. A wild look. Oh, look, I'll get a pair. Gee, that fellow certainly does give up, don't he? He was bearing down on you with that wild look. And then what? And then we both grabbed for the gun. And get that straight, we both grabbed for it. And then, and then everything went purple. Purple? A purple flash. Light or dark? Pardon? I say uh, the light purple like uh, lavender or dark purple like violet? Violet. In other words, self-defense. You can bet your sweet life it was. They'll all be so glad to know you can eat. It's choking me every mouthful, but I feel it's my duty. Oh, it is, it is. You've got to keep up your strength. I can't sleep at night either. All night long, I just walk up and down, toss on the floor. You recall nothing specific during this uh, purple patch? How could I? I? Must have been mad. Insane. Oh, dear. Oh, no, not for the asylum, understand. Over with, right away. Sane before and sane after, with a little teensy weensy spot of insanity right in the middle, isn't it? That's it. Shoot me the jam, Sam. Is it true, Mrs. Hart, you were swept off your feet by jazz? Yeah. What about that black bottom? Well. You're good at it, ain't you? <laughs> I ain't had no complaints yet. How about a little sample? Now? Sure, why not? Sure, Roxy. Come on, this boy. Give, yeah. Roxy. Boy. Oh, you're really the nuttiest guy I ever saw. Why don't you, Mrs. Hart? It might take your thoughts off your tragedy. Do a few steps for us. You don't think it might be what you call out of place? Certainly not. You think we'd ask you if it would be? Well... I don't know if I ought. pictures of you anyway. But I'm the husband, ain't I? I don't believe it. Well, hush my big black mouth. Well, 
vote for the lamps of China, gentlemen. A month later. Won't you tell us just uh, how you happened to take up banditry, Miss Baxter? Did you suffer from an inferiority complex? Hello, Miss Sunshine. Later, Mrs. Hart. Or would you describe yourself as a thrill slayer? Oh, Mr. Callahan, I got a scoop for you. I'm thinking of going on a hunger strike. Okay, kid. Happy hiccups. What about the guy who was with you? They got him outside. Maybe you'd like to go out and take a little peek at him. Do you want to come? worried, Roxy. You're worried? Listen, my lawyer goes out of town on a vacation. My agent, whatever you want him, you can't find him. So in 10 days, only one little scrim of a story and little pictures. And now this. You can figure for yourself how I feel. It's not that. Did you see that editorial in the ledger this morning? About me? It said, why is it that men could be hanged in this county, but not women? It was called, we demand equal rights for women. Say, that's swell. Roxy, please, this is serious. This case isn't going to be like the others. Everybody is getting sore. The mayor, the newspapers, the preachers, the women's clubs, everybody. It never was like that before. Yes, yeah, sweet. Don't you understand? They're going to try to make you pay the penalty. Hmm. I never thought of anybody really worrying about me before. If anything happened to you, Roxy, I don't know what I'd do. How old are you? Twenty-five. Well... Listen, sweetie pie, I'll tell you a secret. Any old time the going gets too tough, all I have to do is just say one word and I'm out. Just one word, that's all. So you needn't worry. I'm so happy. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah, go find that Benham, that agent guy, and tell him I want some action. Right away. You know, a proposition like this, you gotta keep it boiling something new all the time. And when you got your whole future tied up in it, you gotta grab it by the horn and hit it while it's hot. Hit it while it's hot. Grab it by the horn. Hit it while it's hot. Grab it by the horn. Hit it while it's hot. <laughs> Roxy got a build-up. You should have seen two-gun Gerties. Things moved fast in those days. Almost before you knew it, J. Edgar Hoover couldn't have found Roxy's name in the papers. Two-gun Gertie, two-gun Gertie, two-gun Gertie. That's all the papers could think about. But, gentlemen, class will always tell. Roxy Christ to Earth will always rise again. 
just when the hour was darkest. When obscurity seemed to have settled down permanently over that brave little jailbird, up she zoomed again like a rocket. Like a rocket. Back to page one in every sheet in town. With one little twist of the wrist, one simple girlish idea, the queen of them all once more resumed her throne. Walk baby, on the Yes, Daddy. Perhaps you better call me something else. Yes, Daddy. Boy. Oh, you poor dear child. Thank you so much. I'm such a bother these days. Comfortable, my dear? Yes, Dad. <clears throat> dear Mr. Flynn. Game little woman. I've never seen anything like it. Isn't it gorgeous? Aren't you glad? 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 To have your child born here? No, no, dear. You promised me not to get upset again. Oh, what a story. What a tragedy. When is it to be, dear? Oh. Not till summer. June. Harrison's trying to postpone the trial, you know, till after election. For myself, it don't matter, but for the little one. Fat lot Harrison cares about that. Hello, Mr. Callahan. We'll make him care. I'll see to that. I'll call every woman's club in the city, every mothers and teachers association. Oh, Mr. Callahan. Mm -hmm. I think Miss Baxter's trying to attract your attention. We'll start a petition. Get thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of names. Swell. Well, a great idea. Boy. Demanding that bail be granted so an innocent babe can be born in God's great outdoors. You mean in a what? No, not bail for immediate trial. Oh, swell, Mary. Jake. Yeah? I think Miss Baxter wishes to speak with you. She probably has a scoop for you. Hiya, Gertie. Just a minute. Who is that dame? Scram, sister. Upstairs, Gertie. This is private. Scott. Oh, poor Miss Baxter. She seems to live such a lonely life. I've got it. Oh, I've got it. Yeah? We'll demand that the trial start on Mother's Day. Wonderful, oh, Mary. Magnificent. Nice. Well, idea. But I'm the father, don't you understand? I'm the father. Ain't there any room at all for the father? How many people did the state charge with the shooting of Casely? One. How many did the grand jury indict? One. How many are named in the charge? One. And how can the state try to? That's a mighty pretty question, all right, Counselor. Uh, don't you worry, my dear. The American public will fight to the death for you and your wee one. But what will we beat the rap? That's our answer test. Every true woman in the country will be with you spiritually, Mrs. Hart. Motherhood itself will be at stake. You've been so kind, Miss Sunshine. If it's a girl, I'd like to name it after you. Oh, you darling. Oh, that's just too sweet. And if it's a boy, after you, Jake. <laughs> no, not me, honey. Thanks just the same. You uh, slip it to Billy here. Well, I, uh, I appreciate the honor, naturally. But I happen to be married and happily, and would like to remain so. Mr. Flynn, uh, Mr. Hart's outside making quite a fuss. Well, he's got a crust. He says he wants to make it up with her. Over my dead body. He turned on her, and he's got to stay turned on her. He can't switch back and forth like that. Why, he'll never get a defense set. Shall I tell him to throw him out? Oh, I'll see him. Why, we can't allow him to have any sympathy at all. He's got to be the heavy throughout. I'll have to get him to divorce you. If you don't lay off me, sir, help I me. I just want to give you a cigar, that's all. Look, from you, I wouldn't take Clara Bowl. Be with you in a minute, baby boy. Take your time. Well, Mr. Flynn, Flynn, I guess the cigars are on me this time. Well, Hart, I congratulate you. Thanks, old man. That's the way to take it. Be a good sport about it. Came as quite a surprise, too, you know. Well, what does that matter? The whole affair was obviously somewhat awkward. But you're a man of the world, aren't you? Yes, but what do you mean, be a good sport? Exactly. Now, uh, I'm a bit older than you are, Hart. Sit down. 
You know, I've seen such situations arise before. And the only way to take them is philosophically. Just laugh it off, that's all. Laugh? Yes, no matter what they say to you, just laugh at them. <laughs> laugh and the world laughs with you, weep and you'll look like a chump. Maybe I better hold on to this for a little while yet. What's the matter? Maybe I ain't as big a chump as I look. Hot, you're not gonna be a cad. Who says I ain't? Nobody can't make a fool out of me, you know. You amaze me. You talk as if you were going to divorce her. And maybe that ain't all. What do you mean? You think you're so smart, the both of you. But I know what you're figuring. You're figuring if the going gets too tough, you're gonna call in Finnegan. And he'll clear her and hang it on me. Well, you ain't. And you know why you ain't? Because Finnegan is dead. Yeah. Last week, he had another stroke, and he's dead. Finnegan? Who is Finnegan? Not is, was. Who was Finnegan? Just tell her that, Mr. Wise Guy. See what she says. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> Finnegan is dead. <laughs> That's the way Mr. Billy Flynn wanted one. You think they'd throw him out of the courts? They did. Skullduggery in the first degree. All right, go on, Homer. I want to hear what you've got to say about the trial. The day of the big game dawned crisp and clear. This account of the Roxy Hart trial, ladies and gentlemen, comes to you through the courtesy of Dr. Habakkuk Twist, president and founder of the Twist Health Institute, who guarantees to cure you of cancer, dropsy, gout, Bright's disease, lumbago, rheumatism, or sleeping sickness, or any combination of such diseases, in five days by mail. Your play-by-play -play announcer for the trial will be that veteran crime expert of the Daily Gazette, Mr. Jake Callahan. Take it away, Jake Callahan. Now, uh, at that point, you weep. I just wept. Well, then weep again. And every other time I say so. You may not know much law, but I do know juries, and that's all we need. Where was I? Hmm. My innocent, unborn babe. Yeah. Well, not you throw your head back. Nobly. Good. But don't look at the jury on that. Just forget them. Seek the eyes of your husband. He has divorced me and cast me aside. But he is still the father of my child. And the man I really love. And the man I really love. Well, you don't have to get out of the floor. You said slump, didn't you? But gently, delicately, like a lady. You were going on like a sea lion. Another cross-examination. He better watch his step that, Harrison. If he starts calling me names... You'll he... cry! I'll crown him. Now listen. No matter what he says, or how mad he gets, you shrink. Shrink! And cower. And cry. With a little flutter. Until the jury wants to rise up and tear him limb from limb. And never forget, always you're frightened and helpless and demure. Demure, I said. Don't you know what demure means? Certainly. What? What? Demure means shy, timid, modest. Oh. His Honor's here, Counselor. Now, don't get excited. Oh, I know. I did. Let me look at you. Turn around. Take your flowers. Take it easy. And now, folks, it looks like, yes, it is. Here she comes now. Roxy Hart, that game little sharpshooter. Oh. All right, Roxy, let's see you kiss it. Come here and take them all in Bill, what's with the geraniums? Okay, here we go. Open, press, back down. Oh, darling, we're all for you. You've got to come through. Listen, you. This dame is alone, deserted a signal for Lorna. Cut out this food till she's free. All right, Bill. Hold it. Open, flash. Kind. Roxy, will you say a word or two to America? Hello, America. Hello, Mom. Mrs. Hart and I have nothing to say except that win or lose, we expect to play the game fair and square and let the court decide on the plain, unvarnished facts. That's fine. That, ladies and gentlemen, was Roxy Hart and Billy Flynn, her simple, barefoot mouthpiece. And now, here comes Judge Canton. The Honorable Court is in session.
Now, folks, the preliminaries are over, and we have a jury. A blue ribbon jury, men of property, brokers or better. And they haven't had their eyes off Roxy since they sat down. Amos Hart, take the stand. Will Your Honor kindly request the jury to give some small attention to the witness during this testimony? Hey, uh, certainly, certainly. Pay attention to the witness, gentlemen. What's your name? Amos Hart. What is your relationship to the defendant, Roxy Hart? She used to be my wife. Mr. Hart, will you tell the court, in your own words, what, if anything, happened in the apartment occupied by you and your ex-wife on the evening of September 5th? Well, sir, on the evening of September 5th, I arrived at my home, 1442 South Bellrose, apartment 6, from the pool room where I hang out at 1726 South Hoffman Boulevard at 7.17 o'clock p.m. And what did you find, Mr. Hart? I found Mrs. Hart shooting a man. All right, all right. All right, let's go. Everybody ready? All right, hold it. Open. Flash. That did it. All right, break it up, fellas. Why don't you sit down right now and write a nice long letter to Dr. Habakkuk Twist and tell him about your gallstones? Tell us the details, Mr. Hart. Well, sir, I come up the stairs and blam, I heard this pistol shot in my apartment. So I bust in and there she was, banging away at this Casely fella. Bang, 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 bang. Bang? No, sir. Just four bangs and the one I heard on the stairs. Five bangs all together. Well, how do you like that? Did she speak? Was she saying anything? Yes, sir. She kept saying, take that, you cur, and that, and that. Can you beat it? I never said cur in my life. Your Honor, I protest against these interruptions. The defendant will keep quiet, please. Did you say anything? Yes, sir. I said, Roxy, you ought not to be shooting that man like that. In other words, you protested. Yes, sir. And that was about what time? 7.19. 7.20, wasn't it? He said 7.19. I must insist, Your Honor, that counsel for the defense... And I am just as insistent, Your Honor, that this witness give a good performance. Gentlemen, gentlemen! I resent that implication. Oh, if the witness needs more rehearsal, I am... Take that back! Gentlemen, gentlemen! Your witness. When did you file suit for divorce, Mr. Hart? October the 15th. Was there any particular reason for your filing suit on this exact date? Well, sir, the papers came out with a story that... Well, the statement that... Well, there was going to be a little stranger. Mr. Hart, is this grounds for divorce? A little too much of a stranger. But they couldn't put anything over on you, eh? <laughs> I'll say they couldn't. Had your wife apprised you of her condition uh, prior to said statement? How's that? Uh, had your wife told you of this, this stranger? No, sir. Neither one of them. Now tell us, Mr. Hart, do you expect this jury to believe that, well, with all due respect to the press, that our courts would grant you a divorce merely on a newspaper story? No, sir. I had a statement that she'd made and signed herself. All about her and this... Where did you get the statement? From him. I protest, Your Honor. So... The state prosecutor gave you a statement that enabled you to cast aside the woman that you had sworn to love and cherish, for better or worse. And what, Mr. Hart, did you give the state prosecutor in return? This is too much. I resent.
attempt these infamous allegations. A deal was made. Take that back. I repeat, a thieves bargain was made. A forged statement in exchange for this man's lying testimony. Why, you cheap double-crossing shyster. No man can call me that and live. Come on, Mike. Oh, 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 oh. Listen, Mr. Flynn, a photo finish may be good enough for you, but for me, anything less than eight lengths is too close. That's a hanging district attorney out there. I tell you, there is no occasion whatever for alarm. Huh. All we need is one juror, and already I've got that number one guy, that big Irish foreman, right there. Or the worst we can get is a hung jury. Or a hung Roxy. That's not good enough. So far, I've been doing exactly what Jake and that, that, that agent said, let you carry the ball. But I don't like that D.A. I'm scared of him. Oh, listen, listen. Give me time, will you? Listen, Mr. Flynn. The way I'm beginning to feel about my neck, I want you to get a fella in here by the name of Finnegan, Michael Finnegan, and get him in here fast, because we need him, and I ain't kidding. Finnegan? Finnegan? Finnegan, the janitor. Put him on the stand and ask him who he sold his gun to. Ask him what Amy said that very morning. Ask him, ask him. Mr. Flynn, not a chance, buddy. Well, it's important, I tell you. I don't see anybody now. Rossi! You a liar or a newspaper man. We got the biggest story of this century right in our midst. Listen, if this game swings, it'll be a story you can tell your grandchildren about. Why, you cool? Finnegan could tell him that that very morning... Roxy, we can't get Finnegan. Of course you can. What do you mean? He's dead. Dead? Ah, oh, no, he can't be. He's dead. He's been dead for two weeks. We gotta do it my way. He can't be. He can't do that to me. I've been dependent on him. He heard him say it. He sold him the gun. He's the only one who... Listen, I didn't do it. I never had anything to do with him. He was drunk, but I could have got him out. I could have handled him. He didn't have to shoot him. Finnegan could tell him, don't you understand? Roxy, you actually... It's important, Roxy. I talked to that janitor. I, I interviewed him. Finnegan, you did. Let him in, Mike. Mr. Howard, on the day after the killing of Fred Casely, did you have a conversation with one Michael Finnegan, janitor of the apartment house in which the Hearts lived? Yes, sir. Tell us what was said. When I talked to him... Your Honor, I object to the witness answering this question on the grounds that it would be purely hearsay. Why wasn't this man Finnegan brought here himself to tell what he knows? Well, he's dead, Your Honor. He died two weeks ago. Was there any other witness to the conversation? No, sir. Objection sustained. You mean I can't tell I you something? I object, Your Honor, to any further remarks for this witness. The witness will leave the stand. But this is important. It has an important bearing on the... Such testimony is inadmissible. Leave the stand at once, sir. Step down, Mr. Howard. The jury will disregard everything that was said by the witness. You see, in New York, or Los Angeles, or some other sissy town, that'd be the end of it. Nothing but law. But in Chicago, the law doesn't count. It's justice we're after. What do you say, kid? I'm scared. You could do it, you know. They're gonna hang me. Roxy, you know what's not from there. I don't care. I'm scared. Ziegfeld. I don't care. Who? Ziegfeld, the greatest musical producer in the world. No kid. Mrs. Hart, take the stand. All right, all right, hold it. Hold it, Roxy. Let's take a nice one now. Big smile, honey, that's it. Open, flash. That did it. All right, fellas, break it up. Oh, I got a fit. You sound strange this morning, but I because the truth is nothing but the truth. Yeah, I do.
No drugs, no surgery, no down payment. Where do you live, Mrs. Hart? County Jail. When did you first meet Fred Casely? Ten minutes past five, January the 8th. Where? At a bus stop. Tell the jury the circumstances. Well, it was raining and I was standing there with my girlfriend. Mr. Casey drove up in his coupe and he says, it's a nice day for ducks. And we said, yes. Both of you? She said it first, and then I said it. And then he said, could he drive us somewhere? And, well, you know how crowded the buses are. So you said yes. She said it first, and then I said it. And so he drove you home? Yes, sir. How did Mr. Casely conduct himself during this drive? Unusually friendly in any way? Oh, no, sir. He's a perfect gent in every sense of the word. All he said was, when I like to have a screen test. When was the next time you saw him? The next day. It rained again. Would you say, then, that uh, Casely was now pursuing you? I'll say. Other than these innocent rides home in the rain, did you ever have any social engagements with this man, Casely? Yes, sir. Once. And that was? The policeman's benefit ball. He asked you to go to this ball, and you consented. Although you were married, Roxy? Yes, sir. You believe in the sacredness of the marriage tie, don't you? I object, Your Honor. What the witness believes is immaterial. You know that the marriage tie is sacred, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. That's what I kept telling him all along. Tell us, then, why you went to the policeman's ball that night with this man, Casely. Oh, I don't know. So many things happen, you don't know why. I wouldn't have if my Mr. Hart and me hadn't quarreled that morning. Oh, Roxy. And who was to blame? Me, I guess. It seemed like I just couldn't stop pestering him. Pestering him? What about? Because I wanted a home, a real home with little kitties. That's why. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, Roxy. I said fix it in a little closer, Bill. I said talking to the kitties. I said hold it, open, flash. That did it. All right, break it up, fellas. Now, uh, what happened at the policeman's ball? He gave me a drink. Really? What kind of a drink? Oh, I don't know. It just tasted bad. Nasty. If that's what whiskey is. <clears throat> that is just the kind of loose talk that is giving whiskey a bad name. Did Casely misunderstand your uh, ambition to put your talents on the stage? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. Roxy Hart, the state charges you with the murder of Fred Casely. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Oh, not guilty. Not guilty. I may have killed him, yes, but not murder. Oh, not that. <laughs> Do you remember Friday, September the 5th? Yes, sir. Tell the jury now, in your own way, the happenings of that day in the late afternoon. Now take your time and speak clearly. <clears throat> well, that afternoon at Mr. Casey's request, I went to his office and gave an audition for a Mr. Marcus. What kind of an audition, my dear? I did the black hula. The black hula? It's a mixture of the hula hula and the black bottom. I invented it myself. That's enough. Continue. So, when I finished, Mr. Marcus turned to Mr. Casey and said, Are you kidding? and walked out. Go on. So I took the Cottage Grove car to South Melrose and stopped at a grocer's to buy some baking powder for some biscuits for breakfast. He loved my biscuits. And this was about what time? 6.11 p.m. So I was singing about my housework when the doorbell rang and thinking it was my girlfriend, Irma. Well, never mind what you thought. I went to the door, and who do you think it was? Casely? It wasn't his uncle. And, oh, was he intoxicated. So I said, go away, Mr. Casely. You are intoxicated. But do you think you pay attention to that? He entered? He forced his way into my presence. No, 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 no. Be strong, my dear. Bear up. So I said, 
You've certainly got a crush, Mr. Casely, and please beat it. Because how do you think this is going to look to my... to my husband? And he still wouldn't go. Oh, he was really crocked. I mean, intoxicated. Well, why didn't you scream? Oh, I was ashamed for the neighbors to know. Well, you know how you'd feel. But I kept saying to him we could easily get an awful jam here. So finally he said if I just take one drink with him, he'd beat it. So I did. And then? Oh, he was really simply insane about me, you know. But you? Oh, I love my husband. I really did. And when you told him that, what did he say? Nothing. He just grabbed me. And where were you at this time? Uh, standing by the pianola. Uh, show the jury. Take it easy. Here. And Casey? On the floor, uh, by the door. Roxy, tell the jury what happened next. Well, it just happened that Mr. Hart's revolver was laying on the telephone table. And Mr. Casey made a grab for it, and I said, Cut that out, Mr. Casely. And I knocked it out of his hand, and it fell on the floor, and we both grabbed for it. We both grabbed for it. Yes? I got it. And then he started for me. I can see him now with that awful look in his eye. A wild look. What kind of a look? Describe it to the audience, uh, to the jury. Oh, it was terrible. Angry like a crazy man. Did you think he might kill you? Oh, yes, sir. I know if once he got that gun... It was his life then, or yours. Oh, yes, sir. But he still kept coming toward me, on and on, with that awful look, that wild look. And then I shut my eyes. Go on, Roxy. And then I fired. In defense of your life. My life? Yes. But not just mine. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it, Roxy. Just take a knife. All right, get in a little closer, Bill. That's right. All right, everybody, hold it. Open. Flash. That did it. Drag it up. Do you suffer from spots before the eyes? Now, here's where you weep. You may take her life, gentlemen, as the state asks. But that won't bring Casey back. That's always news to a jury. And for what purpose? To protect society? Well, weep, you fool! <laughs> Open your mouth. Give me that gum. Give me that gum! You may take her life, gentlemen, as the state asks. But that won't bring Casey back. And for what purpose? To protect society? Do you fear that weeping girl? Do you? No. Do you? No. For her reformation, she learned her lesson, gentlemen, in those dark hours, alone in her cell. For punishment? Great heavens, gentlemen. Hasn't she been punished enough? No. None of these. But to satisfy the greedy ambition of the prosecution. Prosecution? No. Persecution. To ask for a life, gentlemen, by one who would climb to fame on dead bodies. We cannot give her happiness, no. It is too late for that. Betrayed. Crushed. We can only let her pick up the broken fragments of her life, the tangled threads. We can give her another chance. Quiet. Gentlemen, if you convict this delicate child, it will be like taking these fragile flowers and crushing them into dead and broken blossoms. No! No! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh. Stand back, gentlemen! The defense rests, Your Honor. Hold, hold it, Bill. That's fine. Little this way. That's right, Bill. All right, now, everybody, hold it. Open. Flash. That did it. They're ready, boys.
defendant please rise? We, the jury, find the defendant... somewhere in my Packard. Packard? Roxy. What a day. What a day. So that was Roxy, gents. And the bad old days. Break her down. The bad, bad old days. Day. What a day. Hey, Homer. Okay. Good night, gentlemen. Thanks a lot. Roxy Hart. And thank you, too. What a day. Good night to you, Mr. O'Malley. Good night. You still got that packet? No. Gone, huh? 1929 and everything with it. Gee, that's too bad. Awful. A nice big car like that. Watch your place. The wife sore? Well, you said you'd pick her up two hours ago, you know. Did I? Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Good evening, Mrs. Howard. <laughs> Darling. Yes, dear? I got some news for you. We're gonna have to have a bigger car next year. 